What's up, boys and girls? Happy Friday to all the traders out there. Today, I'm going to go over my week, kind of like at a high-level overview, be brief with that. Then I'm going to give you some key levels that I'm looking for on ES using the VWAP. I'm going to tell you where we may find support next week. So let's get into that. But before we do, a couple of housekeeping things. So Saturday, tomorrow, I'm hosting a joint webinar with the CEO of DarwinX and one of their top traders. If you don't know who DarwinX is, they're a company that is connecting traders and investors. The guy that's coming on tomorrow for the webinar, he's managing $615,000 right now. So it's going to be fun to talk to him. It's going to be like a live podcast. You can sign up with the link in my bio. If you haven't heard about that already, you're living under a rock. It's totally free. And if you sign up, you get a recording. So make sure you're there. Beyond that, we've got a full week of streams on ASFX TV for you guys next week. So make sure you tune in. We're adding streams. We're adding talent to our network as time goes on. Again, there's a link in my bio for that. And the last thing I want to tell you is we've had another Blackshirt Club member pass his funding challenge. Shout out to Steven. He passed just yesterday, I believe, or this morning, London time. And we're super stoked to announce that we have space in the Black Shirt Club. So if you're interested in joining the mentorship group and getting around other serious traders who are trying to get funded and passing their challenges and getting paid out, just hit the link in my bio again. You can book a call with me and we can see if the Black Shirt Club is a good fit for you. We have had Tanner, Ryan, myself, Poppy, Steven, Vic. I think there's one more guy I'm not mentioning. Sorry if I'm forgetting your name. So seven people in the last 30 days in the Black Shirt Club have passed funding challenges. So it's a machine. And it's working. So if you want to plug in, like I said, click the link in my bio and book a call with me. Now, I'm up about a thousand bucks on this XFA account. I am one day away. Could have been today, <clears throat> but I was busy today and I didn't trade. I'm one day away from reaching the five days of at least $200 profit. And then I can get my first top step payout, which is super exciting. Now, some of you are like, Austin, this is not a lot of money. Yeah, I'm trying to build up a buffer in this XFA and I want to show you guys how to do it the right way. Could I swing with bigger contracts? Of course, but we all know where that leads to you, you know, long term. So I'm trying to show you the best way to handle this is trade a little more aggressive in your combines, get your XFA, and especially I think you want to trade aggressive in the beginning of your combine. Once you get a little bit of a buffer, go back to normal position sizing and then trade the combine the way you're going to trade the XFA. It's hard to wear two different hats is when it comes to disciplines and things like that, position sizing and things like that. So now that I'm in this XFA and this is my third XFA, I want to show you guys the right way to get a payout, the right way to build up a little bit of a buffer. And then you can start trading with more size. 250 bucks a day sounds like nothing to most people, right? You spend that at Chipotle basically now, but you stack up 250, 260, 275 over the course of a week. You make a thousand bucks at the end of the week. You do that a couple of weeks of the month, even just one XFA account like this with Top Step can pay you a couple grand, which is probably more than some of you are making in the last month with your trading. So slow and steady, small gains compound over time and they pay. You can see it's very green. It's beautiful. But notice more important than anything, two trades, one trade, one trade, one trade. I think one of the biggest issues right now that's screwing people up in our group is they are trading too much. They're over trading. They're giving back the gains that they make early in the day. I've got guys up $2,300 and then giving it back. It's crazy. So you've really got to understand the markets have changed. It's a see profit, take profit kind of market. And that's what we're going to look at here. So on ES, we're looking at the continuous contract at the daily time frame. You can see we were at the current price, basically, of 50.03, so 5,003. We were at this price at the end of February. We are now back to that price. But notice, it only took us two weeks to get down here. It took us basically a month to move up. So this is the whole saying. The indices take the stairs up and the escalator down, right? And this is a really good visualization for that. And that's why on the upside, people kind of get bored with the indices. I feel like when the buys are easier, it's just not as sexy and exciting as it is when we're sliding like we have this past week. If you use uh, any type of data in your trading, one of the sources that I like to use is Edgeful. Shout out to Edgeful. They provide a ton of interesting stats. One of the ones that they just added for me recently was this inside bars day stats where you can see how many days are we inside bars versus outside bars. They've got a ton of fun stuff. But one of the things that we like to look at is green versus red streaks. You can see on days, weeks, or months, max red days, max green days. The max red days that we had had so far this past year was five. We've now had six. So today was something that we did not expect. I honestly thought we were going to find support at 50-50 and we were going to bounce to finish the week, but we did not. And that's why I stayed flat today. I was also really busy. But look, we've got some important VWAPs to talk about. So the first purple VWAP you see here, that is the start of year VWAP. That's the VWAP we just sliced right through, okay? The black VWAP, 
is the handoff you see here. It's also the VWAP from our October lows. If we go back, you're going to say, Austin, what VWAP is that handing off from? It's the previous all-time high set at the end of 2021 before we went into the bear market of 2022. Now, in 2022, it took a full year, basically, 287 days, and we dropped 28, 27% on ES. And I know other indices dropped different amounts, but I'm just looking at ES because this is what I trade. But after that bear market, we rallied. We set a high here at the end of July last summer. It wasn't a new all-time high, but it was a high that we fell away from about 10, 11%. That 11% pullback had some of these escalator days down, as you can see, where we slide for a couple of days straight here, here, and here. Now, there's bullish pops here and here, but it's escalator down the rest of that time. And it drops to that previous, at the time, it was the all-time high VWAP. And that's exactly where we found support and moved off of. Now, in Brian Shannon's book, he teaches you how to draw handoffs. This handoff is where we're going to look for support going into next week. So going into next week, the key zone that I'm looking at here is... 48.80, 48.70, something around there, okay? If we end up bullish for the first two or three days next week, we're going to say, oh, it just retested the all, uh, the start of your VWAP. It didn't make it back to this handoff VWAP. Now, if we end up selling off somehow just to that VWAP, it's only 8.7%. That's a healthy pullback after such a strong run-up to start this year. Because remember, to start this year, we're up 30%. So an 8 or 9% pullback over the next couple of weeks is not unheard of. And then maybe even a little bit of a range trade Sideways at this level, it's not unheard of. It's healthy, okay? It's not healthy for a market to go up 100% very quickly. Now, if we slide lower than that, we could see that previous all-time high VWAP tested, and that would be a 20% pullback. And that would be a little bit more serious, and that might be something to get a little nervous about. I think you might have more of a catalyst that is needed to come in to really create that kind of selling. And this is kind of like my point of making this video. It's not to show off my month or anything. I, I always update you guys on that. I want to hear from you guys. What do you think is going to happen? Do we actually have a catalyst in the market right now that's going to send us lower? Or are we experiencing a healthy 7 to 12% pullback that we get almost every year, right? So I want to hear from you in the comments. Do you think that there is a catalyst to send us lower? Should we be more bearish now that we're six red days in a row going into next week? Or do you think we find some support, maybe like I said, at 4,900, 4,880, maybe we find support at 5,000 going into next week and we bounce because there is no catalyst. So what side are you on? Is the Fed pivoting enough of a catalyst to send us lower? Is the Iran and Israel war enough of a catalyst to send us lower? Plus, we have big earnings next week. I think Google's earnings are next week, Visa, all the defense companies report, some banks report next week. So maybe that catapults us. But that's always confusing too because earnings is forward-looking. The stock market is forward-looking. Netflix crushed earnings this week and the stock dropped. So make sense of that. So what do you guys think? Is there a catalyst that's sending us lower or is this just a healthy pullback? Tell me in the comments. I appreciate you guys watching this. Have a great weekend. I will see you Monday morning or at least hopefully I'll see you on Saturday. But if I don't see you for the webinar, I'll see you Monday morning on ASFX TV at the New York Market Open.